So let me tell you about my journey. Oh man, growing up here in Hawaii is pretty special. I had two amazing parents who had migrated to Hawaii in their pursuit and love for the ocean and surfing and a more simple life. They worked really hard to keep us afloat, but they also spent a lot of time with us adventuring and getting us to the beach. And that's where my kind of passion and love for surfing sparked. So as I got older and older, I really dove into my passion for surfing. Sometimes I would go to school with my hair wet and sand on my toes, and I had a, like a knack for it. I was really talented and skillful at it, but I also had the drive and determination, and I love the competitive aspect. I started competing at a young age, and I was kind of the one to be in my age bracket and even in the older age bracket. I would always go against the older girls and sometimes even the boys and um, I was rocking it. I started to really take competitive surfing serious and with the support of my mom and dad we started to travel uh, inner island for the National Scholastic Surfing Association competitive series where I was competing against all the top surfers here in Hawaii and I was only 11, 12 at that age and I was competing against uh, juniors and seniors in high school and making heats and eventually that led to making it to the nationals. So it was clear to say that I was heading on the right path in the right direction with the dream to be one of the best female surfers in the world. I went home that summer kind of on the moon, you know, just feeling that that movement of pushing towards um, being one of the best. It, and I was determined, but little did I know what was to come. It was that fall on October 31st, um, Halloween. I was surfing with my best friend off the coast of Kauai and it's the most beautiful day you could imagine and that beauty quickly turned into fighting for my life. I lost my arm to a shark, and yeah, I think of that day and what I faced, and the fact that I made it through it is a miracle. I lost over 60% of my blood, and yeah, it was crazy. Um, I had to get to the beach almost a whole mile. Um, my friend's dad brought me to the beach, but it's not so much about the awful moment or the awful day, but the moments to come and the way I approached my future from then on. I woke up in the hospital realizing that my arm was gone and my future was upside down and I didn't know what was possible at that point and just kind of feeling deflated. But I also had this warm sense of peace that I was thankful to be alive and that God still had me in His hand. And I moved forward with gratitude rather than anger and frustration. I mean, yes, there was a bit of frustration and just that feeling of like, I don't know what's, what's next, but I was thankful just to be breathing. And I also had community surrounding me. And one of my first influences during that time was a guy by the name of Mike Coots. He had lost his leg to a shark as well, but he learned how to surf with one leg. And he came into the hospital and talked with me and said, hey, like, I think you can surf with one arm. I was paddling around this morning with, with one arm and practicing popping up and I think it's possible. And all I needed was that little hint of hope to push forward and know that there was something possible for my life and for my future. And I decided right then and there in that hospital that I was going to get out there and try. I had the willingness to try. I had that kind of theme of like, I don't need easy, I just need possible. And that propelled me forward. I think if we approach life with not needing the easy, because the fact is life's not easy and it's not always perfect and there's always challenge being flung our way. But if we approach life with I just need possible, we're gonna be able to achieve so much more than we know and dream of. And that's certainly true for me. So less than a month later, I was back out there surfing again, pushing it. I remember popping up on my first, very, my third wave I tried to pop up on. I stood up and rode the wave all the way to the beach and it was one of the best rides of my life. Rather than 
focusing on what I didn't have, I focused on what I did have. We can all do the same. We can focus on what we do have and what we can do and how we can just adapt through life. You know, there's constantly challenges being thrown our way and maybe it's not an arm loss, but maybe it's a relationship struggle or a physical difference or health issues. There's so many different things that can kind of be our thing that we need to adopt through. And thankfully, I got out there and tried and today I'm a happy mermaid still doing my thing and I love it. Um, I went on to actually continue competing too. I started competing less than um, six months later and I made the final of my very first surf contest with one arm and then I continued to do, compete around the state of Hawaii and then that next summer I made the finals of the nationals with one arm and you know it's not about the one arm really it's about how I adapted and chose to look for the good in the situation and for me my faith in God was key too I trusted that God had a promise for my life and a future and to just keep moving forward even though I don't know what my future looks like. From nationals, the following summer I ended up winning <laughs> and that led me to compete as a professional later on in my teen years. I started competing and traveling all over the world and you know what? It was a blast and it was so hard but there was more to it. It was grindy. The pro circuit is not easy. Everyone's partying, making tough decisions. I was surrounded by people with eating disorders. And these were hard to bear, hard to be around. But I made choices that brought my fo future forward. I chose to uplift myself and make choices that supported my, my talent and my body in the way that it needed. So these compelled me to learn many things that I now want to share with you. The biggest thing, seeking community that was uplifting. You know, I had some friends that were struggling and I still love them, but I sought after people that were going to uplift me. Be coachable. I continued to be coachable and continue learning and growing. I knew my why and I chose my future. I didn't let people around me choose my future. Yes, I listened to their advice or yes, I learned from their mistakes, but I chose my future. I then went on to continue focusing on my nutrition and living a healthy life. When we're healthy, we can go and chase the dreams and things that we love to do. I stayed mentally strong. I love this quote from Gabby Reese. She's a part of my Unstoppable online course. She says, if I flip me, I flip my environment. Sometimes our environment's not always warm and welcoming. Finally, I stayed strong in my faith. Take some time to think about the things that are important to you in your life and how you want to live out your life. All these things help me to live and continue to live an unstoppable life. When adversity comes our way or tough, unhealthy influences are pressing down on you, you have the ability to overcome and come out stronger and more confident. So I urge you guys to think about the things that bring us down. Become aware of those and say no to them. I said no to drugs and I don't regret that. I look forward to my life every day. I wake up today and now as still a professional surfer, a wife and a mom. And I, I'm excited to wake up and live my life. I don't have drugs stealing from my beauty and my purpose and my passion and skill. I continue to kind of not think about the limitations that having one arm held, but how can I be the best in the ocean every day? So I would focus on my fitness and push myself in the gym so that that would carry over into the ocean. I didn't let the barriers of one arm hold me back from the skill that I had in the ocean. And I would strengthen my body from head to toe, not only physically, but mentally. I would wake up thinking about how strong I was as a human and how I could let that mental strength carry over into my physical and let that carry over into the ocean. 
you know, there's so many different negative influences that come our way, and one of the greatest ones we face now is social media. If you're scrolling and getting carried away in the negative that you see or comparing yourself to other people, while well, meanwhile you could be out there living out your own life, stop having FOMO on everyone else's life, but live your life and be propelled forward. So set your boundaries, you know, there's boundaries that we could all set to propel us forward and keep us moving and working out our dreams and goals. We all face times in our life of negative pressures, unsurety, adversity that can shake us to our core. We can hold tight to our, our identity, our whys in life when we surround ourselves with an amazing community and take care of ourselves physically and mentally. When we choose patterns of choices that build our future, we can stand up to the pressures that are thrown at us and we can be strong and confident in ourselves when obstacles come our way and we can live an unstoppable life. Thank you.